Hello, this is Matt Slick from the Matt Slick Live podcast, where I defend the Christian faith and lay out our foundations of the truth of God's Word. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening and for choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. The heart of every man craves a great adventure, but life doesn't usually feel that way. Jesus speaks of narrow gates and wide roads, but the masculine journey is filled with many twists and turns. So how do we keep from losing heart while trying to find the good way when life feels more like a losing battle than something worth dying for? Grab your gear and come on a quest with your band of brothers who will serve as the guides in what we call the masculine journey. The masculine journey starts here now. Welcome to The Masculine Journey. We are glad that you're with us this week. We continue on our series of the boot camp talks that we'll be doing at, uh, at boot camp. And so far, we've covered a couple different ones. What have we covered? Does anyone remember? I do. Okay, go ahead. And I wasn't even here last week. <laughs> you weren't even here last week. I was superposing when I was... Yeah. <laughs> so we, we did the core desires. We did core desires. Like what really makes a man come alive. Mm-hmm. And then we also did... Yesterday, I mean, last week we did the poser. It That's like how yesterday. it becomes super poser, right? Yeah. Yeah, apparently we're super posers. <laughs> so <laughs> we have to figure that one out. We yeah. have what it takes. <clears throat> we do. We do. We super have what it takes, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. You know you're a poser if you have to leave town whenever the poser talk or what's yeah. happening, right? Yeah. yeah well, next week we'll be on judging. <laughs> so we'll go back to that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So Andy, and I won't be here. <laughs> yeah, so Andy, won't you tell us what this week's topic is? As you wound everybody. In <laughs> yeah, your room. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for setting that up, Sam. Now we wanted to talk about the wound, and I don't really want to talk about it, but that is my what I'm going to talk about at the boot camp uh, this year or this spring. And um, you know, I, I think I kind of avoided that talk. I mean, you know, talks just kind of there's certain things that interest and. You know, I, I felt like I needed to do it. I, I responded early on when I started doing talks about my wound. But it's not something that uh, you want to go into naturally deep. People avoid that, you know. It's something that, you know, somebody we either push it down and say it didn't really happen or we know it's there and we just avoid it. So, you know, that's what we're talking about here is just really going in and, and not just staying at the wound but going through the process that will get you to healing because – Really, all this goodness of God that we talk about, all the blessings from him are going to have to be come out of that healing to where you can go on and, and find your new name and, and, and really experience sonship and learn how to do spiritual warfare or whatever. Why are you staring at me the whole time you're talking? <laughs> the, no, uh, you're absolutely right. I think there's one other option, though. I think that we see sometimes, probably in our own lives, other people's lives, definitely in, sometimes in social media, People also wear their wound like a badge, to some degree. I mean, well, we can we can we can throw it out there in front of everybody, but never get healing from it. Yeah, and none of none of those really work until you find the place where God can help you yeah. get healed. I guess it could be our uh, excuse instead of our wound, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it could be the barrier yeah. we put yeah, up right. against other people as well. Yeah, sure. So, would you like to go to the first clip? Yeah, let's go to the first clip. This is, I'll, I'll just put it right back on you, let you set this up. Well, let's go with the clip from Lost. Okay, yeah, this is from the, the TV uh, show Lost that was, I know, several years ago. But in that TV show, if you're, you watch it for a little while, it's about, you know, this plane that crashes on this island and no one knows what's going on. There's no real leader. You know, the pilot's no longer alive, that type of thing. And so they keep looking to Jack one of the characters to rise up. He's a surgeon. You know, they want him to rise up and take leadership. And, and there's something in him that wants to, but he just can't. And so he's talking with one of the other uh, castaways, you know, that's on the island with him and asking, you know, Jack, where's that really come from, this reluctance to step into leadership when everybody wants you to do it? And Jack flashes back to a time when he was about 10 years old. He's been in a fight uh, helping defend one of his friends. And he comes in, and his father, who's also a surgeon, is setting having his after-dinner drink or drinks <laughs> to try to cope with the day. And this is the interaction they have with each other. You want to come in? So, you want to tell me what happened? 
A couple of guys jump Mark Silverman. A couple of guys jump Mark Silverman. But they didn't jump you. No. I had a boy on my table today. I don't know, maybe a year younger than you. He had a bad heart. He got real hairy real fast. Everybody's looking to your old man to make decisions. And I was able to make those decisions because at the end of the day, after the boy died, I was able to wash my hands and come home to dinner. You know, watch a little Carol Burnett laugh till my sides hurt. And how can I do that? Hmm? And even when I fail, how do I do that, Jack? Because I have what it takes. Don't choose, Jack. Don't decide. You don't want to be a hero. You don't want to try and save everyone. Because when you fail, you just don't have what it takes. Probably a talk that would stick with you, you know, for a long time. If that's your father who you're kind of called to look to, to to give you an answer of how you're doing as a man, you know, even a young man, you know, dad, do I have what it takes? And his dad directly says, Jack, you don't have what it takes and you're never going to have what it takes. You know, and it is a very confusing conversation he has with him. His dad's battling his own demons, obviously. But, you know, you fast forward in in the TV show, and that's where TV really gets some things right sometimes. You know, they fast forward into Jack's life, and at this point he's in his late 20s, early 30s, a new surgeon kind of thing, maybe mid-30s at that point, and he still battles that old voice saying, you know, Jack, don't choose, don't try to be a hero, don't rise up when people need you to. Because at the end of the day, you're going to fail and you don't have what it takes. You know, and we all have those Jack moments in our life where a coach or somebody has spoken those types of words to us and we think they don't impact us, but uh, impact us. But if they're never healed, they echo around in there somewhere. Yeah, for sure. And I think we were talking about this earlier. We don't focus a lot. Those wounds happen to us all, all through our life. But I think the ones that are most impactful stay with us and affect who we become as we grow into an adult or those wounds that happen as a child. So, Yeah, you can definitely tell, you know, when you learn somebody's story, you know, when, when, when you know squat about somebody else, <laughs> uh, you know their story that you can, uh, you kind of can say, okay, that's where that probably came in, you know, and help them see, okay, maybe that's why you're battling this. Right, because there, there's an undealt, undealt with wound, even back when you're four or five, six, even before that. Anybody? Yeah. Bueller, <laughs> Bueller, you got anything? No, Robbie. No, I wanted to point to you because you know, you and I have both had breakthrough at this level uh, of healing. Is God taking us back into very early years in our childhood to deal with issues that cause a whole host of things down the road that doesn't feel related? Right, and it makes you feel like a six-year-old again inside. Yeah. And so when they were asking Jack, you know, why, why don't you lead this? He, he's feeling like a little boy and, and like he doesn't have what it takes and exactly like it felt there. And so, you know, one of the you know, critical issues I was dealing with when I was 12 or 13, obviously, with, was some abuse that I had from, a, my, you know, one of my relatives. And... So every time that I would find myself struggling with those addictions, I was going back to the 13-year-old Robbie that had to be had to find a way out, you know. Mm-hmm. And it, it's so it's part of Jesus's plan to bring him in, you know, to that situation to help that 13-year-old or the 6-year-old or the 5-year-old or whatever age you were to interpret this and then for the older Robbie to begin to integrate the younger one so he doesn't keep embarrassing me. Or by the same token, I actually feel him and, and that young part of me come alive in the wonder and the, and the childlike um, spirit that God has in mind that we would integrate back into our healing. Yeah, one of the scriptures that we, we use at boot camp and, and basis of boot camp is Isaiah 61. And, and we've talked about it on the show before, but you know, Jesus talks about he's come to heal the brokenhearted. And that word for brokenhearted literally means shattered. 
So if you imagine dropping a, a glass from very high up or a plate glass window, all the shards that go out there, and each one of those shards are wounded places that's happened in our life at different times that he's got to integrate back in to get the picture full again. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, I was sitting here thinking, too, well, what's the significance of a child to, to Jesus? You know, it says, you know, don't forbid the children to come to me, you know, such as the kingdom of heaven. But also, you remember when he talks about if you offend one of these, you know, it's better that a millstone be held around your neck. Well, how does that feel to him when those things happen to you, when you're wounded, when you're in that child? I mean, that's what he's trying to prevent. You know, he doesn't want those kind of things happening to children because he knows the impact going on. And he knows, I mean, he knows he's going to be there and there's going to be relationship gained by taking the person through that healing process. But it's just he understands the young heart better than anybody, you know. So I think that's why that scripture is there. I, I want to ask you, as a listener out there, when you mess up on something, what's the terminology you use with yourself? It's usually very condescending, and I promise you it's tied to a place back in your history that you're just trying to build evidence of. You know, oh, you're an idiot. Okay, well, it's pushing back on a wounded place way back there somewhere. It could have been a week ago. It could have been 25 years ago or more. But it's pushing on that place that Jesus is trying to deal with, right? Because he has to reconcile that or you won't move past it. It doesn't mean your past defines you totally. But you're impacted by your past, especially if you don't deal with these things. Right. And, and the cool thing, when you begin to unpack it and, again, come to boot camp, we hope, and, and to see the effect of all this and, and bring God in, is that when you begin to feel that young place welling up, like, golly, I feel like I'm two, or, I, you know, I feel so anxious, then it's like a check engine flashing, like, okay, bop, 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 Jesus, this is something that really is going to require some work on my part to go back into this. You know, it may mean counseling. It may mean a lot of things, but what he definitely wants is he wants in on it, and, and he wants you to live back wholehearted and, and to bind up those shards back into what he had originally designed for you. Absolutely. You know, and good counselors will take you back to those places, right? And then in, in, interject Jesus in the midst of it. You don't have to come to a boot camp to have that happen. Jesus is right there with you all the time. And the only reason we say about coming to a boot camp, because what a boot camp allows you to do is to check the outside world away and just get away for three and a half days, you know, and really just let Jesus do work that's so hard to find time to do in a busy daily life, right? Try to get somewhere where you're not getting a text, a phone call, something, or somebody pulling at you. A boot camp allows you to do that and to get healing. And so to register for the boot camp, go to masculinejourney.org. Registration's up there. It's coming up at the end of the month, April 29th through May 2nd. Go to masculinejourney.org to register now. What if one weekend wasn't up to you that you could go and God would orchestrate it all? Masculine Journey Boot Camp, basic training designed to give men permission to be how God made them, passionate warriors for the kingdom. Based on John Eldridge's wild at heart, experience four days purpose for God to come after and perhaps reawaken dreams and desires he uniquely placed in your masculine heart. Masculine Journey Spring Boot Camp coming up April 29th through May the 2nd. Go to MasculineJourney.org and register today. Hi, this is Sam with Masculine Journey. I'm here with my son, Eli. We're going to talk about ways that you can help support the ministry. One way you can go to smile.amazon.com. Go to smile.amazon.com. There's information on our website there on how to do that. You can go to facebook.com and click the donate button, or you can go to masculinejourney.org and find the donate button. masculinejourney.org. Or if you want to mail something in, mail it to P.O. Box 550, Kernersville, North Carolina, 27285. My son turned 10 just the other day He said, thanks for the ball, Dad, come on, let's play Can you teach me to throw? I said, not today I got a lot to do He said, that's okay And then he walked away, but his smile never did It said, I'm gonna be like him Yeah, you know I'm gonna be like him so, Andy, other than depressing all of us with that, <laughs> that little song, by, every time I listen to that, I'm like, oh, my gosh, am I that guy? 
Right, yeah, but well, why did you choose that for the uh, bump in? So interestingly, I I felt like I had my dad did go and throw the ball with me, but I remember my brother bringing this up that he didn't feel like he got the time with dad like that like that, and I've just known it always to be a song where there's regrets of the father not being there for the son and the wounds that happen. I mean, you know, I'm too busy for you. I'm going and making a career. I'm making my you know, building my kingdom, and then the kid, hey, I just learned it from you. The rest of the song goes on about how the kid kind of turns it back when the father wants time with him late in life. So, yeah, so Harold, before we went to break, there was a point you wanted to make about boot camp. Yeah, what I was wanting to say is one of the big advantages of boot camp is you find out you're not the only one. That's a good point. Right, The enemy wants to convince you that it's just you that yeah. deals with these things. You find you know. out that it's a lot more common than you might believe. Yeah, yeah, good point, good point. So, Andy, you want to talk a little bit more about the topic of of woundedness? And so where do you want to go next? So, you know, wounds come in a wide variety. You know, um, we just talked about the, you know, the song, and just that was neglect. And then the example earlier was basically a father telling his son he didn't have what he took. Verbal abuse, uh, neglect. Now, the next, I want to, Robbie, to, to uh, set up this next clip uh, um, on Goodwill Hunting, but just on it, um, you know, if that movie's been around for years and really is, you know, a classic on the on wounds and, the, and what it does to an individual and some really powerful moments where a counselor goes after a man's heart and just the healing that comes from that. But it's more of a, it's a different type of abuse and yeah, and it, that that movie, if you haven't watched it and uh, strong language bothers you, that would not be the movie for you to watch. Yeah, get the vid, eight, vid angel version of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I am one that is kind of prudish when it comes to language, but it's funny. That is one movie where, and it was flying all the time, but it didn't impact me like it does in the others because it's not gratuitous. Right, it's just in their language. So it's a case of this young man who's obviously a genius because, you know, he's working at Harvard and is a janitor, but he's figuring out all the math problems, but he's got a real problem with his temper. He's got a real problem with fighting. He gets in all kinds of trouble, ends up, you know, getting probation. He's got to go see, of all counselors, I, he'd be the one I would pick, Robin Williams, <laughs> who just does a fantastic job. But in this particular scene, you know, he's been seeing Robin for a while, and, and they certainly, you know, have developed a good relationship, and he trusts him. And, and so that's part of the reason that you'll hear the response that you'll hear, and he, they're comparing stories. And, and so he finds out that, that Robin Williams' dad was an alcoholic and beat him, and now he's being confronted by how this worked out in his own. So you'll hear a little bit of his story on how his dad beat him and then how Robin Williams goes after that, which had a gigantic impact in my own life in the understanding that really through this clip, from my opinion, this clip, every human being needs to listen to this because at some point in time in their own wounding, they will face this particular reality. Uh, he used to just put a, uh, a wrench, a stick, and a belt on the table and just say, choose. Well, I gotta go with the belt there, Vanna. Uh, I used to go with the wrench. Why the wrench? Because of him, that's why. Your foster father? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what is it like? Will has an attachment disorder? Is it all that stuff? Fear of abandonment? Is that why uh, is that why I broke up with Skyla? I didn't know you had. I did. You want to talk about it? No. Hey, Will. I don't know a lot. You see this? All this. This is not your fault. Yeah, I know that. Look at me, son. It's not your fault. I know. It's not your fault. I know. No, no, you don't. It's not your fault. Hmm? I know. It's not your fault. All right. It's not your fault. It's not. 
not your fault. Don't. It's not your fault. Don't fuck with me, all right? Don't fuck me, Sean. Not you. It's not your fault. <laughs> You know, I just found that as I actually was working through with Jesus and one of the incidences that had really messed up my life more than anything else that was a significant wound from a family member, but I always thought I caused it. I always thought it was my fault. And fascinatingly, as as Jesus took me back through that, and it took him to do that, that I I literally couldn't accept forgiveness because it was my you know this was my bad this was something that that I put myself in that position in order to receive this particular treatment and and all that other stuff and so the blame was there, and forgiving yourself is of course the epitome of the pride that I think Jesus is really trying to get to in a lot of our wounds, that that we want to take that on ourselves. And so what happens there in that clip to me, I, I, I'm, my prayer is that we would all hear it and be willing to go back into these places and, and reevaluate as an adult or as a 65-year-old instead of a 25-year-old. Whatever it is, go back into that place and let Jesus help you interpret that and then accept his forgiveness so that you can then give forgiveness to those people that you haven't forgiven. And otherwise, you know, there's no healing without all the forgiveness that's important, critical to my point of view, of yourself, the other people, and sometimes God. Like, how did you let this happen? I, uh, in listening to that and earlier, I have, and I, I need to listen to that some more because I had wonderful parents. I had wonderful grandparents. I knew I was loved unconditionally. I struggled with this topic for several, well, probably all the boot camps except for one or two where God intervened. But I do feel like most of my wounds have been self-inflicted. So how do we deal with those? I'm a, I was Robbie last week, so this week I'm going to be Sam and ask Andy the tough questions. How do you deal with those, Andy? Yeah, Andy. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. The, those, those tough wounds like that of just, um, you know, it, it's a process, I think. Um, it's something that where you have to to get um, more more um, input from others. I mean, just looking at what how um, uh, Robin Williams in that case uh, went after um, Matt Damon's heart. Um, he didn't just let it go. Matt was hiding. Uh, Good Will was hunting. I mean, Will, he was Will hunting. Was, Will was hiding. He was hiding and hunting. But he was hiding and and he was posing. We talked earlier about this how we tend to pose, and that's to hide it. Um, that's to hide, you, you know, that wound. And he didn't mm-hmm. really want to uh, let go of that. I mean, he really had to keep going. I mean, it was almost came to to fist, you know, there because he just wanted to keep backing away, and it's and to allow somebody in. And, you know, we talked last week, too, about authenticity. You know, for uh, Robin Williams to share his story really opened, um, you know, well back to, you know, healing. Let let me answer that a different way, Jim. Um, Knowing you for a few years now, you're your own worst enemy as far as you're very hard on yourself. I would start asking God, where did the foundation of that begin? Because I promise you there's probably a wounded place where someone told you or you accepted I should have been smarter in that situation and it would have been avoided, right? And everything else since then is just building evidence back on that wound. But also I would would add, which is exactly along the same line since you asked the question, is you had an enemy who knew exactly how to bait you. 
right? Which is what happened in my own story. And what Jesus pointed out to me in, in the, inside of that is, Robbie, you were duped. You were, you were thinking the outcome was going to be this through that behavior, but the enemy knew what he was really setting you up for. And so it was, in fact, you were set up and you were stolen from. And, and, but you took all the blame because, again, it, it was pride. I was going to say that y- you know the who, you know the what, you know the when. you got to find out the why. There you go. Hey. And you guys are right. And I did have a breakthrough in that when a – in. This was counseling when I was doing chaplaincy training, and a guy who I really didn't like that was on the leadership of that, basically I was talking about, well, I need to read the Bible more, I need to do this, I need to do that. And he looked at me and said, you're arrogant. And that blew me out of the water. I said, how do you get arrogant out of that? Bottom line was, and this was a breakthrough and step forward, I still got a lot of weight ago but it was a you know god has forgiven you through jesus and you won't forgive yourself so you're stepping in and being arrogant say you know what you did for me wasn't enough god and at the time that really hit me hard so my as you put it well and i have always known it i'm my own biggest enemy but i have to forgive me I think we'll probably get to forgiveness in the next part of this. Yeah, we're going to continue the topic in the after hours. So if you listen to it on the radio, please go to masculinejourney.org and you can get the after hours where we continue to talk about woundedness. And at the end of the day, Jesus needs to guide you through that. It may be a father wound. It may be a mother wound. It may be a coach, a sibling. It may be an ex-wife or a current wife or Whatever that might be, Jesus knows what you need to work on most in the wounding. But go to him and say, Jesus, where do you want me to work? Please work in me and help me move past this. We'll talk to you more next week. This is the Truth Network.